Yes, welcome to our discussion, a beginner's guide to online pedagogies and learner management systems and platforms, as well as instructional design. We are looking at teaching and learning in the digital age, taking note of the changes that have occurred in the recent years. And we are looking at how the teacher ought to respond to these changes, some of which have almost become very permanent uh, aspects of our daily lives. Now, we are living in the, an era of changing landscapes in, all, in respect of almost every sphere and aspect of life. And uh, without doubt, Education has not been spared by this turbulence and the changes that are taking place on a, on a daily basis. For instance, we may have been used to a teacher who was a fountain of knowledge, knowing everything and giving every, every piece of information to the children or to the learners. But now things are different. That kind of a teacher who's the center of knowledge is no longer uh, the author of the day. Um, new approaches to teaching and learning are emerging on a daily basis. We have witnessed some significant changes in learning and teaching approaches in the recent years and we must adjust ourselves in order to meet all those changes. The face-to-face the -face classroom is no longer the exclusive mode of lesson delivery, which then brings us to the question, what are the other modes of delivery that are in place? We now have a proliferation of online or virtual or digital classrooms, which are becoming more and more fashionable by each day. Virtual classes have actually become more attractive, both to adults as well as to children. We seem to have a lot of people going that route for a number of reasons. And we need to take note that uh, as things are changing, we should ask ourselves questions. What if this uh, homeschooling becomes the future normal? How can teachers leverage on their expertise uh, to provide these online tutorials? Because certainly they must be the ones to lead the pack in the provision of online tutorials. Um, a rule of the thumb, there are certain important factors that one has to consider. Um, you know, the increased use of re re remote collaboration tools, platforms and learner management systems make it imperative for every teacher and educator uh, to, you know, familiarize with these uh, modes of lesson delivery so as to keep abreast with the decision, with the developments in education. Deciding on the most appropriate learner management systems and platforms uh, through which to engage learners is an ongoing uh, personal review uh, because as systems continue to change, we must also continually adapt ourselves to those changes. What about the adoption of appropriate pedagogies or methods of delivery of learning material, taking into account that uh, the pedagogies or methods of lesson delivery that were prevalent in the era of, uh, you know, face-to-face -face tuition may no longer be appropriate now when it comes to uh, the issues of, uh, you know, online non-personal interaction. So the teacher has to you know, develop appropriate pedagogies and methods so as to be able to interact with the learners. Um, this goes hand in hand with developing appropriate uh, assessment design as well as reporting tools. How are we going to assess our learners and students? And how are we going to report if they are now based on, you know, online classrooms? How about the issue of keeping abreast with the learner recruitment strategies, as well as, uh, you know, keeping abreast with the technological uh, changes and requirements, because this is a very dynamic area, I must say, 
before you even catch up with a, a one system uh, several other new ones have replaced it now uh, we reiterate once more that traditional teaching and learning approaches are not effective in online engagement which gives us uh, takes us back to the issue that uh, appropriate uh, methods must be developed now let's look at the learner, learner management systems these are uh, a, a kind of remote learner management systems there are several of them uh, we have among them common ones like uh, the Google Classroom, which is offered by Google for free. We have got other ones which are paid programs or paid applications, but Google, fortunately, is one of those uh, freely available online platforms. But, but certainly, if you want to enhance it, you may have to buy a few add ins here and there so that. Uh, you know you bring it up to the level where you want to take it we have other uh, online platforms like Moodle we have Sakai which is used by quite a number of uh, universities local universities here in South Africa and then we have also got the Blackboard uh, or the Blackboard collaborate platform also used by some universities here in in, in the Republic of South Africa and then we have e -tutor, uh, sorry a tutor uh, Camilo well we have zoom which is not necessarily a learning platform but it's a, a remote uh, collaboration system which can also be made uh, made use of we also have the the issue of uh, MS teams uh, these are remote collaboration uh, systems or platforms which allow people in different geographical locations to engage with one another now some as, as we have already said some of them are free while others are only accessible at modest and reasonable fees so you'll have to look at your budget and decide which one of the platforms you find most appropriate <laughs> now let's look at some examples here we've got a, a, a google a classroom learner management system and this is the the interface well you may not be able to see it from where you are but uh, there are quite a number of tools there that you may need to familiarize yourself with but it's quite a friendly system uh, you can actually teach yourself how to you know navigate this uh, system but if you need assistance there are quite a number of uh, very useful uh, youtube teachings on on how to make use of this lms learner management system we've got another mentioned in our forgot going discussion uh, which is the the sakai but like i said this one is a paid program so you need to look into your budget and this one is quite useful if you are managing very large institutions uh, hence you find that universities tend to prefer this one because it supports quite a number of uh, learning tools such as blogs you know discussion forums discussion groups you know even podcasts so this is quite a flexible uh, platform but you also need to familiarize yourself with it think now in terms of cost development there are quite a, a, a number of essential uh, if, I mean, things to think about in connection with uh, learner develop, uh, uh, course development. Uh, that means deciding on the relevant course material. What course are you going to, to provide in your online uh, learner management uh, uh, program? Um, some people are already engaged in some institutions colleges or schools where they are offering tutorials so i mean course development may not be a problem there besides the fact that you just maybe need to adapt your material design for face-to-face -face tuition so that it can now be used uh, maybe as a uh, on the online platform so course design depends on the consumer needs what are the needs of your consumers 
Now you must engage with con potential consumers to find out uh, what their learning, learning requirements are. What exactly do they require? Uh, as we have already said, you may deliver on subjects for which uh, public examinations are conducted through some accredited bodies. Um, there are some accredited bodies that are already, uh, you know, uh, offering these some of these examinations. So you may just take advantage of the accredited uh, bodies and then get their syllabi or um, curricular material and then just deliver lessons on that. And the learners can go and write in those, I um, mean, examinations under those public boards and then enrolling uh, your learners you may deliver to students already enrolled at a teaching institution where you are already appointed as a teacher or a tutor or a lecturer whatever you, they call you you may offer courses to the public or you may also be subcontracted as an independent uh, contractor to support homeschooling programs um I, we spoke about some independent rather public examination uh, boards uh, we have an example here the university of cambridge international examinations uh, is a very important uh, board it offers the certificates on, almost on a global scale wherever you are we also have these uh, computer based um, you know examination boards such as comtia which also offers quite a number of internationally accredited certificates so if you are an expert in it uh, with sufficient knowledge on the on, on the operations of these systems you can actually start an online school and provide a uh, tuition to learners uh, that uh, require that kind of support and now let's look at the technological requirements in order to run a viable uh, program you need to keep abreast with uh, technological developments and there are some basic technological uh, needs that accompany this kind of uh, an enterprise you have some hardware requirements you need a good personal computer you may need a camera or a webcam for video capture though you may also make use of uh, uh, pcs uh, what you call the the, 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 the webcam that uh, that is uh, built into your laptop if you have one you may also need a good USB microphone so that uh, you enhance your sound the quality of your sound you also need video capture cards to allow for streaming if you are going to have any live programs or, web or say, say webinars or whatever you may need to do that kind of a capture card which enables communication between your camera and your your, your computer then you may need suitable uh, connecting cable those are the hardware requirements what about software requirements you need content generating software such as micro uh, microsoft powerpoint you may also need video editing and general editing software We've got quite a number in the market. Comes here, uh, MS PowerPoint with Filmora, among those that can be used for you know basic editing of videos, um, or even those that come with your laptop. Uh, they 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 can actually be utilized in connection with that. And then you you may also need a live streaming software. We have some of uh, you know some of these uh, softwares such as open broadcast yes, studio that's obs is one of those but there are many others you, you may have to consult with the, those who deal with this kind of software so that they may recommend the best one for you now uh, with this uh, just an, in, an image of some of your uh, hardware requirements because this is the kind of you know technology that you need in fact it's the kind of technology that i have used to make this video for you how do you use the technologies that becomes the next uh, important question um learning to use the technologies is very very important 
Remember, good technology is useless if you can't use it properly. Devote time to learn how to use the technology. You may need to take online classes on the use of the technology just to perfect your skills so that uh, you know you, you, you know how to do it and you do a perfect job because uh, your, your viewers out there will always want good quality stuff. And you may have to share common practice with uh, like-minded people. You need to connect to established professionals with whom you can share your concerns, ask relevant questions and share your experiences so as to benefit others out there. Remember, we live in an age of a sharing economy. You can't just keep what you know to yourself, but you need to share it with others. And as you share with others, you also get to benefit. That's the interesting part of, about the whole thing. Um, now, so many opportunities out there. You may have to think about them. But of course, opportunities do come with challenges. But just think for a while. What are some of the opportunities that come uh, with the... Uh, with the use of you know these remote learner management systems right there are vast opportunities so many people want to learn new skills since you already have the skill you may have to share them with those that need them you see whatever you know will not increase you if you don't share it with others because you already know it and what's the point in you knowing it if we are not going to use it to enhance the lives of other people. So you may have to share your skills with other people so that uh, the world becomes a better place. Now, some people do not have the time to attend formal classes, so they may benefit from your, you know, virtual campus or virtual classroom, because then you make um, knowledge sources available to them without them having to, you know, go into a formal class. They might not have the time for that. They may have a very busy schedule, and as a result, they will not be able to sit down in a classroom and uh, learn. So they can take advantage of uh, those virtual resources that, are, that you have put out there for, for their benefit. Now, there's so much content available on the internet, and that's one of the challenges that we have. With so much uh, content available, how do you establish yourself within the virtual em em environment? How do you identify that niche point, uh, you know, position yourself there and be able to, uh, to add content that will add value to other people's lives? Because you don't want to just go out and make a video or try to teach people on a subject where there is already material available. So those are some of the challenges. The competition is very broad. Because as you sit wherever you are, you are not only competing with people in your locality, but you are competing with people all over the world. Somebody out there on the other side of the hemisphere may have actually thought and made a teaching on the same thing that you want to teach. So how do you establish yourself and distinguish yourself from the rest of the people? That's one of the serious challenges that you've got to face. And there's also the issue of having to keep abreast with the technological changes in this uh, breathtaking exercise. Remember, there is so much volatility, so much dynamism within this area of technology. New machines, new technologies, new applications, new softwares are emerging every day how do you keep abreast with those it, it's one of those challenges so you have to learn fast in, if you are going to keep afloat because uh, otherwise you may find yourself sinking earlier than you thought now that brings us to the end of our discussion uh, to conclude let us remind each other that delivery of education has taken place rather has taken a new turn in recent times. The mo modes and the method of delivery are not going to be the same again. In the light of the dramatic changes, education, 
practitioners need to think on their feet. You got to think on your feet. You can't afford to sit comfortably anymore. Of course, there are vast uh, opportunities that exist out there in the field. Practitioners are able to choose from a, a broad spectrum of uh, these appropriate tools. But before you can choose from the true tools, you must familiarize yourself with them, which means you must be an active learner before you can be an active teacher. In summary, let's look at uh, the following as recommendations. You need to identify a me the method of lesson delivery that is appropriate to your own needs and the needs of your students. And then you need to select an appropriate learner management system among uh, the, the myriad of uh, systems that we mentioned earlier in our discussion. You have to maintain a channel of delivery. How do you take your material out there to the people? How do you meet the people and keep them supplied? And then you have to keep abreast with the changes and the new ch uh, with the, new, the changes that are taking place in respect of uh, these cutting edge technologies. How do you keep yourself informed of what is new, what is becoming obsolete, what to adopt and what to phase out? So these are some of the most important uh, issues to consider in, in the delivery of online classes. Thank you very much for your, taking your time to listen to our teaching. Uh, we look forward to meeting you again next time. Uh, please um, press like below and subscribe so that we can continue to bring uh, you more of our content. Thank you very much.